What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. As you know, I've been participating in a 2017 North American International Championship retro format tournament hosted by Pokestats. This is round four of that tournament. I'm 3-0 so far with my Drampa GX Zorark deck, and I'm playing against Michael Slutsky with his Volcanion EX deck. We have an incredible series. I'm really excited to show it off to you guys. Volcanion EX is one of the most powerful Pokemon from the X and Y block and definitely the best dual type Pokemon from that era. Volcanion has 180 HP and an incredible ability, Steam Up. Reads, once during your turn before you attack, you may discard a fire energy from your hand. If you do, during this turn, your basic fire Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. This ability stacks as well, so if you have multiple Volcanion in play, you can boost your basic fire Pokemon's attacks by up to 120 damage with four Volcanion EX in play. With Choice Band in the mix, you can easily hit crazy one hit KO numbers with Volcanic Heat for two fire and a colorless. It does 130 base damage and this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. And of course that can be circumvented with cards like Floatstone or Switch in order to attack back to back turns with your Volcanion EX. Now, interestingly, Volcanion EX is both fire and water type, typically types that do not go together. So Volcanion EX hits itself for weakness, which creates some pretty crazy mirror matches. The most popular partner for Volcanion EX is Baby Volcanion. It's got 130 HP and two great attacks for one fire energy. Power Heater deals 20 damage and allows you to choose two of your bench Pokemon. You can attach a fire energy card from your discard pile to each of those Pokemon. This attack has fantastic synergy with Volcanion EX's Steam Up ability, which sends fire energy to the discard pile and boosts the damage output of Power Heater, allowing Volcanion not only to accelerate energy to your bench Volcanion EX, but set up some key knockouts as well. Steam Artillery for three fire energy deals 100 damage, and allows Volcanion to get in there as a pinch attacker as well, dealing some big damage after some Steam Up abilities. And that's about it for the Volcanion deck. It's a really fun and explosive deck to watch in action, so I'm really excited to share this series with you all. If you're looking for the first few rounds of the tournament, they're in the description below, so sit back, enjoy the show. Make sure to check out FullGripGames.com for all your trading card game singles, as well as FullGripCodes.com for instant beat CGO code delivery. I'm going to be playing first in the series. I start my Turtonator GX to Michael's Baby Volcanion. Got an Ultra Ball thankfully off of the top deck and two choice bands so I can play these choice bands down before I use the Professor Sycamore. A little bit unfortunate that I'm going to have to use two Versus Seekers in my opening hand, but it's okay. I can get an energy onto the Drampa GX, who is my ideal lead in this matchup since Michael's going to be able to pare his bench down pretty small. He doesn't actually have to bench a ton of Pokemon. He doesn't have to bench a ton of Shaman EXs or anything like that in order to set up. He can just get some Volcanians into play and use the Steam Up ability and then start using Power Heater to get those energy onto his bench Volcanion EX. Also, Max Elixir is a card that sees play in this format. So you're going to see Volcanion use Max Elixir to accelerate those energy into play. We see Michael had to discard a Max Elixir there off of the opening hand, finds the Brooklet Hill. Really wish that my Team Magma Seeker base would have stuck around another turn so that maybe his Volcanions took some residual damage there. Instead, he gets to bench them and utilizes Brooklet Hill, an amazing stadium card from this era, which lets you search out either a basic water Pokemon or a basic fighting Pokemon from your deck. And since Volcanions are half water and half fire, they qualify for the Brooklet Hill search. And use the Brooklet Hill real quick just to check my deck and make sure that uh, I'm aware of the resources that I have available to me. If I'm able to get this Drampa GX into the active, I could use Berserk. However, I am not able to do so. As you see, I am stuck without a supporter or a Versus Seeker to go grab a supporter. However, I do have another Zerua and a Zorark. So I can use Zorark's stand in and Mind Jack, but I hate to waste a Mind Jack without actually taking a KO. And I know that Volcanion's uh, Power Heater attack can easily do 80 damage if he finds a couple of Steam Ups, literally just two Fire Energy, and he can Steam Up twice, and Power Heater will deal 80 damage to knock out the Zorak. So this Mind Jack feels really ugly here. Mind Jack for 70 damage. Uh, I'm not even uh, remotely close to knocking out that Volcanion, but I need to get the Turtonator out of harm's way using Shell Trap also 
Uh, didn't feel very good since I suspect that maybe uh, Michael would have been able to take a knockout on the Turtonator. And if I let Michael really skip ahead that quickly and take a knockout on the first GX, I know I'm going to be in for some trouble. So I'm just trying to buy some time here. Maybe I can eventually get Drampa GX into the active position for a big wheel. But sure enough, we see Michael with the double steam up. And it's taking a knockout on my Zork with the Volcanion. And we can see how much of a wall this baby Volcanion is to get around. It's such a feel bad knocking out this Volcanion because something that this deck does very well is it plays that prize exchange game. So I'm going to use my Tapu Lele here. I think I'm just going to go on the aggressive, grab the Lysander, and I'm taking out one of these Volcanions. I know that I want to stay aggressive here. There's no point in knocking out that baby Volcanion and then risking a knockout in return. So I just uh, Berserk. I use my special charge here just in case I get end to four. I want to have that special charge out of the deck. And Berserk dealing 150 damage plus the 30 from Choice Band. Perfect numbers to knock out one of those Volcanion EXs. And knocking out a Volcanion EX is pretty crucial. I don't think, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't think that Michael's List plays any copies of Switch. I'm pretty sure it's just Floatstone to pivot between Volcanions after they use Volcanic Heat. Uh, might be a copy of Switch or two in there, but not many. It's mostly going to be Floatstones there. So the ideal situation is to be able to pivot between multiple Volcanions. Uh, in order to utilize their attacks. Now we see Michael is powering up his own Turtonator GX, and uh, he actually can utilize Turtonator GX's second attack, Bright Flame, uh, something that I can never do because I do not play actual fire energy. So I only play the double colorless and use Turtonator GX for the Shell Trap. Sure enough, I have a Shaman EX, so I'm going to set up here, see some more cards. We find a Hex and a Sycamore, as well as a Counter Stadium. Now, I was looking for a Versus Seeker. Potentially, I could have uh, Lysandered up that other Volcanion. That would have been incredible. If I could have taken out a second Volcanion here, that would have been awesome. Now, the risky thing about putting Turtonator GX down uh, against my deck is that I know that Zorark Break can copy that Bright Flame attack. It does 160 damage. And with the Choice Band, I can one-hit KO a Turtonator GX. So... That is a big deal here in this matchup. Now, it looks like I'm setting up another Zork, which is fine. And then I have a Professor Sycamore. I have the Rainbow Energy on my Zork there on the bench. And I'm going to be able to start using Foul Play, which is pretty effective in this matchup. Now, Drampa GX can take a knockout here. I didn't find any sort of uh, other energy or anything like that. So taking a knockout with this Drampa GX is definitely a feel bad because we see Michael's board is set up on the bench. He's got two fully loaded Pokemon EX. He can attack with Volcanion EX, and then since he can't use that, uh, he can't use that attack on Volcanion EX back-to-back -back turns. He can just retreat for free into Turtonator GX and take another big knockout with Bright Flame. So I'm definitely nervous about the prospect of using Berserk here, and don't really feel like uh, like it's worth it. So looks like I'm considering a retreat, I'm considering a stand-in. Um, I'm trying to, you know, figure out uh, what the most optimal route is. And it looks like I may just sack a Tapu Lele GX because I want to save the Drampa. I've got the Verse Seeker in my hand now. And so long, if Drampa doesn't get KO'd, I can just take out the Volcanion next turn. Sure enough, Michael has the Lysander in his hand. It's going to take out my Drampa GX. Now, I don't want to knock out that baby Volcanion because I know it's just not going to help my prize trade at all. The only two knockouts I have left to take in this game are uh, on the Turtonator GX and the Volcanion. And I know that Michael, being a very good player, will not bench another non-GX for me to take out. So it's not going to help my prize trade at all, knocking out that little Volcanion, because Michael is not going to bench another non-EX, non-GX Pokemon for me to target, because he knows better. His prize, you know, he's got his prizes mapped out. He knows that uh, I have four prizes left to take, and any time that he can shove that baby Volcanion out to, uh, you know, to either deal some damage or soak a hit, uh, it's going to be a free turn for him. So I try to end Michael to three here, and I've got a Rescue Stretcher, Ultra Ball. Zorak Break in the active can foul play, at least copy Volcanic Heat, so that's pretty good. We're going to deal 130 damage there. 
And uh, I'm promoting a non-EX Pokemon, but my class has three prizes left and some damaged Pokemon GX on my bench. So if he can just knock out the Zorark break, then he can clean up one of my benched EXs or GXs. Shaman EX, of course, always a liability with its 110 HP. Could take out one of those for game. Turnator GX, coming into the active, it's got that bright flame attack, 160 damage, gonna one hit KO my Zorark break. Now, the Volcanian EX could not attack back to back turns, so he kinda had to play into the Turtonator here. Now, Turtonator has 190 HP, which is very unfortunate because Drampa GX with a choice ban does not actually get there against the Turtonator GX, which is tough. And I was not able to get a Zorark into play last turn, so I am not able to do the play where I copy Bright Flame for a KO. Now my best bet, I think, is gonna be to end Michael to two and hope that he does not have a switch out out of this since Turtonator GX did have to discard two energy attached to it in order to take that KO. He is only two prizes away from winning the game, but uh, N is always live. So we're gonna end Michael to two and see if maybe he gets stalled out for a turn, now he, he could use the Nitro Tank GX attack on Turtonator GX, which is a powerful option as well. It accelerates up to five Fire Energy cards from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like, which is awesome. And he can get his, uh, his board position completely powered up and ready to steal this game. Now, I'm definitely in a tough spot. As we see, Michael has done an incredible job not over benching. With just two bench Pokemon, my Zoraks have been pretty much useless in this match so far, and I'm really nervous that this is a sign of things to come in this matchup. His, you know, pairing his bench down, just two bench Pokemon. Mind Jack only dealing 70 damage. Typically, we're seeing Mind Jack hit upwards of 190 damage. Michael were to have a full bench with a choice ban, I would have been able to take a one-hit KO on this Turtonator GX, but Michael, again, uh, knows exactly what he's doing here and is playing this match very heads up. Now, if my Zork is able to live through the turn, I'm pretty excited about that. I've got a Zork break in my hand, a double colorless as well, and a choice band as well as instruct a Rangaroo. So I'm gonna be able to fill my hand back up to three after playing these cards down. Now, Michael is just going for game, presumably. Now, for me, going in with the Zorak break, very useful because it is a non-EX, non-GX Pokemon. Michael has two prizes remaining. So if I force him to knock out this Zorak break, that definitely plays to my advantage. Now he has two damaged Pokemon EX or GX on his side of the field. So I'm on a two turn win clock. Uh, if, if Michael doesn't win next turn, I could win this turn. So that's really big for me. Now I use Professor Kakui. I could put the Drampa GX into the active position and take a knockout. Let's see, I'm dealing, uh, what, 70 plus 90 plus the, yeah, choice band. I'm actually taking a knockout with Mind Jack this turn. So this is the ideal situation, me taking a knockout with a non-EX, non-GX Pokemon. And if Michael doesn't win the game right here, I have it. However, if he's got a Lysander or a Versus Seeker, it's game over. He's got Ultra Ball in his hand, and I'm thinking this is going to be a Tapu Lele GX for Lysander for game, and I'm feeling real sad. I uh, brought that game back. It was really close, but sure enough, he's got the card. So he set up the win perfectly with the Nitro Tank GX, making sure that no matter who I knocked out on my turn, he was going to have somebody, be it Volcan EX, Baby Volcanian, or the Turtonator GX, who's going to be able to take game on my lowly Shaman EX. Going into game two, I'm feeling like I know more about that matchup now, but I start a really ugly hand. I've got Professor Sycamore and my Shaman, a Zork, a Choice Band, a Lysander, and my Special Charge. I have to just throw the Double Colorless onto the active Drampa because I'm about to get rid of my Special Charge. So I just know for the remainder of the game, I only have four Double Colorless Energy. Now that's really stressful. I also got rid of a Darkness Energy. So my resources are gonna be strapped. That's not the way that you want to start out game two of a best of three series when you lost game one. You really wanna have all of the resources in your deck available to you. And I see that Michael, again, 
starts his baby Volcanion. So he's got his perfect starter in the active position again. He's going to be launching the first attack, so he's going to get to soften up my Drampa GX here. Immediately starts with the Brooklyn Hill again. His Volcanion EXs are not going to be taking any residual damage from Team Magma's secret base. However, I was able to get that 20 damage onto my bench Drampa GX, which is big, meaning that if I just find an energy, I can start using Berserk for upwards of 180 damage, certainly enough to knock out the baby Volcanion. Now, interestingly, something we didn't really see in this last match is that Michael's List actually plays uh, quite a few Fighting Fury Belts. Fighting Fury Belt is a tool card that boosts your basic Pokemon's HP by 40, and it boosts their attack damage by 10. Max Elixir coming into play here. We didn't actually see Michael play uh, Max Elixir last game either, just relied on Nitro Tank and Power Heater. I think a lot of the most popular Volcanion lists from that North American International Championships actually didn't play too many Max Elixir. A lot of them were pairing back on the Turbo Engine. You're not going to see any Trainer's Mails, uh, not too many Max Elixirs because a lot of decks were just very afraid of, uh, of Trash Alanch Garbodor, which dealt more damage for the amount of item cards you had in your discard pile. So a lot of these lists have really paired back their turbo engines uh, and really relied heavily on supporters, on attack-based energy acceleration, things like this, uh, in order to compete with Trash Alanch Garbodor, which ended up winning the 2017 North American uh, International Championships. Sure enough, Power Heater for 80 damage, accelerating energy onto both Volcanians. Now I'm excited this game because Michael had to bench Tapu Lele GX. That's big. And I actually just have the turn to, we're going to bring up your Volcanian and Berserk it for knockout. So I'm like, okay, even though we got off to a little bit of a rough start with a really ugly Sycamore there in my opening hand, I do have the turn to Berserk for 180 with the Lysander to knock out one of your EX Pokemon. That is a lot of pressure from Jampa GX. And and with Michael already whipping one Max Elixir, I'm pretty confident that he's not going to be able to take a knockout on this Drampa GX. So sure enough, he sends up the Baby Volcanion. Sending up Baby Volcanion, I'm like, I don't think you're going to deal 110 damage with Power Heater, though I've definitely seen it. Uh, sure enough, Power Heater for 50. That's okay. I'm like, all right, I can stomach that. And we actually got into a pretty good hand here off of the end. I've got a Instruct Oranguru, Choice Band Kakui, and Professor Sycamore, as well as another Double Colorless Energy. Now... With three bench Pokemon, I'm dealing base 100 with a Kakui. I am just 10 damage shy of knocking out that Volcanion with my bench Zork, which is really unfortunate. I don't want to have to knock out this uh, this Oranguru at all. And it looks like I'm going to commit the double colorless to my Drampa. I think that I really like that decision there because I know that I only have four double colorless energies and Drampa is just going to be one of my most reliable attackers in this matchup because of the fact that Michael is going to be pairing his bench down as small as possible. We saw last game, my Zorix did almost nothing. So I'm going to be looking to get into my Zorix breaks this game. Zorix break uh, is really good for putting pressure on these Volcanians and also uh, just for dealing more than 70 damage, more than 100 damage. They could certainly... Uh, get closer to one hit KO numbers, especially if Michael ever has to bench a uh, that Turton Eater GX again. I know that I have that thing uh, on lock with the Zorak break, but that's definitely a dangerous bench for Michael. He's probably not going to want to bench the Turton Eater GX if he doesn't have to. So I've got another double colorless on my Drampa. I've got my third DCE in my hand now, as well as a couple of Zorks. My, bo my board is set up pretty beautifully, so I'm digging that. We know now with that Volcanion EX on Michael's bench, fully loaded, three fire energy, and both fighting Fury Belt on his Volcanion EXs, even though I took the lead with uh, that big Lysander KO on turn two, I have my work cut out for me for the remainder of my prizes, because even though Tapu Lele GX is over there on the bench, only got 170 HP, I could certainly knock that thing out. These Fighting Fury Belted Volcanion EXs are going to be a huge pain for me to take out. They've got 220 HP, and my list does not play Field Blower. It's a little bit of a greedy call, but uh, the card is relatively situational and don't actually need it for most matchups, and there's no guaranteeing that you find the Field Blower when you need it. So, hitting into these Volcanion EXs, certainly a feel bad. I know that they are not going to be one-hit KO material. I am going to need 
to take two shots to KO these things. Now, knocking out that baby Volcanion is cool and all, but like I said, it actually just puts me on an odd prize race. So now uh, Michael and I are essentially at the same spot. I can win with two more knockouts. Michael can also win with two more knockouts, assuming that I bench another Pokemon EX or GX, which I probably will. So even though I took the lead and I really set the pace for this game, uh, Michael is certainly catching up. Now I can't use his Volcanion, uh, Volcanic Heat attack back to back, so I do know that he is gonna have to find a switch. So maybe an N here could stick him. Looks like uh, I may just go for a Hex Maniac. So I'm gonna Lele for a Hex. Now Lele for Hex is an interesting call because I'm gonna stop that steam up uh, attack from working. So I make it so that uh, he cannot take a one hit KO on my uh, on my Drampa GX. And I kind of force him into uh, this two hit KO game for me with me, which is really good because uh, with 20 damage on it, this Drampa GX is really close to being KO'd by this Volcanion. So all Michael would have needed was one steam up plus the uh, Volcanic Heat for 140. That would have dealt 170 damage. My Drampa has 20 on it already. So that would have been a KO. So the Hex was really heads up play there. And I like that call there because, uh, you know, Michael could have just taken a key knockout uh, with that. We see he actually has to do the hard retreat into his other Volcanion here to take a knockout. And this is why Turtonator GX is such a big card in this particular deck and this particular version of it because you can use the Turtonator GX's Nitro Tank to put fire energies back on your Volcanions, especially, you know, if some of them get knocked out or if they have to hard retreat somewhere. Uh, but Michael decides to go for that knockout on my Instructor Ranguru, and then I just end him to three. Now, Michael also knows that I'm probably not going to be able to knock out this Volcanion. So by promoting this fully uh, healthy 220 HP Volcanion, Again, I'm gonna have to berserk it for 150 damage. And with Michael only having a three card hand, I'm feeling uh, much more confident about it. Now, I don't really want to promote this Zorark break here. It's kind of weird. If I promote Zorark break, then all Michael has to do is knock out Zorark break, then knock out Tapu Lele GX or knock out Drampa and it's game over. So I would much rather kind of lead with a couple of GXs here to end the game, maybe force Michael into taking four prizes, or maybe soak a hit with a Drampa, go in with a Zorark break, then go in with another Zorark, right? Hope that Michael doesn't have, uh... oh, sure enough, Michael does play a switch. All right, so there's a switch. Now, there's not many switches in the list, but this Staryu is getting benched because it has free retreat. So Michael decides to bench the Staryu, switch into the Staryu. It's got free retreat. It's gonna allow him to attack again with the same Volcanion. So this is gonna allow him to potentially take this knockout. And this game is really coming down to the wire. Decides to bench that non-EX, non-GX Pokemon. Also benching another Tapu Lele GX, making his bench much larger, right? He's got four Pokemon on the bench now, but he needs to do this to kind of keep himself in the game and keep this momentum up. He doesn't have a lot of energy in play. Uh, the energy that he does have in play is on two damaged Volcanion EXs. And we can see how meaningful those Fury Belts were. I never had any chance to one hit KO them with only one prize remaining. Michael just needs to take one more knockout and this series is over. So sure enough, I'm gonna burst Seeker for end. We're gonna take a knockout with Mind Jack and we're gonna see how it goes. So ending Michael to just one card. He does not have a great board state. So I'm feeling pretty confident about this. Michael would need a pretty incredible turn in order to take the win here. But with cards like Shaman EX in the format, anything can happen off of an end to one. He could Shaman set up, uh, maybe draw into a Baby Volcanion, uh, Steam Up, something like that, and knock out my Zerua on the bench. There are ways for this game to get ugly. And now we're both getting end to one, but I get Lysander off my end to one. Perfect end to one. And we're going to bring up the Staryu, Mind Jack for knockout. And we're moving on to game three. Really close game there. I'm excited to make it to game three. So at least I could try one more time uh, to see if we can uh, take it to 4-0 here in the retro tournament.
Uh, Michael's going to be going first in game three. Starts his baby Volcanion again. I've got an okay opening hand so long as there's no Hex Maniac being played on Michael's first turn because I can just use Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele GX. Now I'm actually kind of excited because Michael doesn't get any bench Pokemon off of that Professor Sycamore. So he's in kind of a tough spot. I top tech Tapu Lele GX, so that's good. I can use my Ultra Ball for something a little bit more meaningful. And it looks like I decided to get rid of the Rescue Stretcher and a Lysander. Putting the Lysander into the discard pile is definitely good because then I can uh, I can just Versus Seeker for it back later. So I have more Versus Seekers in the deck than I do Lysanders. And this might be one of those games where we big wheel GX. I can either go for Bridget and get myself a bunch of Zorks and I think that, or a bunch of Zorus. And I'm thinking that this is gonna be the best case for me. And I decided to just, it's a really tough call here because I could either fill my bench, right? And if I fill my bench, which I decide to do, I'm like, wow, this is perfect. I'm gonna have, uh, you know, such a powerful start here. But by filling my bench, I actually have not damaged any of my benched Pokemon. So it's a strong open, but a little bit greedy because I didn't leave any opportunities for me to bench a Pokemon with my team Magma's base. But I was so kind of enticed by the opportunity to get four Zeruas out on the opening turn, quickly evolve up into all my Zorks. Not to mention Michael has nothing going on on his side of the field. So I'm just like, let's let's get it rocking here. Now I definitely could have just pinched one of those Zeruas. I did not need to get out four Zeruas. Could have been three Zeruas and there's no rush. I could have just left that one bench spot open and that's certainly going to come back to bite me now. Michael is having a terrible time over here, has not found any Volcanians, and is using Power Heater to accelerate energy onto his Tapu Lele GX. Now, if there's one thing that Michael is doing, he's taking this kind of suboptimal opening, and he's not going to bench any Pokemon, though. He sees that my board is just filled with Zeruas. If he benches a lot of Pokemon at this point, it's just going to be Zorark City, and I'm going to be mind jacking all over the place. So he decides to just keep his board Volcanion and Tapu Lele. And because I have not been able to get one of my bench Pokemon damaged yet, I'm not going to be able to Berserk for a one hit knockout on this Volcanion. But if I did have a damaged bench Pokemon, we would be able to do that. Now I do have one Rainbow Energy in the deck, so I can potentially use Rainbow Energy in order to inflict damage onto one of my bench Pokemon, power up Berserk. Now, it looks like I am going to commit that double colorless. I'm thinking about maybe going a DC on a bench Pokemon or something like that. No matter what, it's a feel bad because I know that Zorark's Mind Jack is doing essentially nothing. Uh, I'm considering actually retreating here and trying to bait uh, him to damage my Tapu Lele. So that's what I go for because I have the special charge in my hand before the research. So I decide that there's nothing really worth doing here, right? Berserk for 80 pointless on a non-GX Pokemon that feels so bad. So instead, I decide to retreat into the Tapu Lele. I'm going to take a turn to kind of set up a little bit. Michael doesn't have hardly anything going on on his side of the field. So I'm like, all right, I can sack a turn here to just put my Tapu Lele GX up and just say, all right, you know, please power heater my Tapu Lele GX so that Drampa can start hitting for 180 damage. Meanwhile, I'm going to evolve up a Zorak, potentially set myself up to get a Zorak break the following turn. Maybe I'm thinking I will find a Lysander off of that Sycamore or something like that so that I can gust around this baby Volcanion. But I like my decision there to retreat the DCE off the Drampa. I think that's fine. I have Zorks in play, and the Zorks mean that uh, I'm going to have a lot of one energy attackers for the remainder of the game. So since Drampa already has a darkness energy on it, it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, even though I lost the energy there off of the retreat, we still get that energy back into the deck since I was able to use the special charge. And I like kind of keeping the Drampa safe here on the bench rather than just leading with Berserk, 80 damage, kind of like a really uh, weird thing. Not to mention... Even though Michael didn't have any Volcanians in play yet, it's not to say uh, he didn't start to get some Volcanians into play uh, the next turn. Now, Michael does not take the bait. He does not hit into the Tapu Lele GX. He knows better than that. He's like, okay, if you hit into the, uh, if I hit into the Tapu Lele GX, then uh, uh, some bad things are going to happen. So it's making me question myself because if he had hit into the Tapu Lele GX, then the retreat into the Lele Wager 
would have certainly been worth it. But since he has not hit into the Tapu Lele GX and he has not benched any other Pokemon, now I'm kind of back where I was a turn ago, where there's this fully loaded Volcanion that I can't actually knock out in any kind of way. So we have Zoric Break, that's good. And uh, now I'm thinking, I'm like looking at these Aruas, like this seemed like such a strong opening and now I'm just stuck with these Aruas down on my bench and I can't actually put down anybody else. I was not expecting this game to get off to such a slow, grindy start since all of our previous games have been like turn two GX knockout, right? I mean, just turn two crazy berserk, uh, so on and so forth. I was expecting Michael to have a bunch of benched, you know, Volcanians by now and was gonna start using Power Heater, but Michael is looking for an alternative way out of this sticky situation that he's in. He's very much responding to what my board is. And since he sees that my board is filled with Zora, uh, Zoros and uh, potentially Zorks, then he's not going to bench any Pokemon and instead gonna keep his three energy Volcanion safe there in the active. So uh, it's a little bit of a weird spot for me. I figure, okay, I mean, I certainly can't go wrong just continuing to set up my board, but now I'm in the same spot where it's like, do I seriously go Berserk for 80? I'm not gonna Berserk for 80. I just kind of draw a line in the sand. I'm like, no, because then he could just bench two, if I Berserk for 80, he could bench two Volcanion EXs, double steam up and knock out my Drampa with steam artillery. And then I'm like, okay, then a non GX takes out my GX Pokemon, who I kind of have all my investment into right now. Michael's got another Field Blower and a Lysander to bring up my Drampa GX. So like the whole, uh, please hit into my Tapu Lele shenanigans, that just did not work out at all. Completely backfired and Michael uh, now is gusting around the Tapu Lele and is softening up the Drampa. So in hindsight, potentially should have just gone in with the Berserk and kind of kept the aggression up uh, even if it meant sacrificing the Drampa GX early, just uh, since I had the advantage of speed in this matchup, I think I could have afforded to two-hit KO uh, the Volcanion. And now that it's got a Fighting Fury Belt on it, I'm in just a world of pain. It's got 170 HP. Even if I berserk this thing twice, I'm only dealing 160 damage now. So this was like one of my fears. This is why I did not want to Berserk for 80 damage because uh, 80 damage times two does not even KO uh, this Volcanion. So I decide instead to Hex and I'm just going to Mind Jack for a measly 40 damage, which just puts it back to the 130 uh, that it was at previously. Now, what's also horrible about this is even if I use Professor Kakui or something like that, I cannot knock this thing out. Now, Michael finally does have to actually damage one of my bench Pokemon. So I'm like, hallelujah. Okay, great. I can actually retreat to the Zork if I uh, if I want to and actually take a knockout with the Drampa GX. But by doing that, his Tapu Lele easily disposes of my Drampa GX. So now looking at this board position, I'm like, okay, it's looking like we're probably gonna start having some Tapu Lele GX wars. Now, uh, Michael's... Tapu Lele says, he says, trust me, I'd, I'd like to be doing more. Now, obviously, he would like to have, uh, you know, some Volcanians out, stuff like that. Uh, Pokemon to be able to take advantage of, uh, of the fact that this has been kind of a slower game. But Michael is uh, kind of taking the hand he's been dealt and he's playing it very well. Uh, he's softening up a ton of Pokemon. And... I'm actually legitimately concerned about that Tapu Lele over there because of the fact that this baby Volcanion, just this simple baby Volcanion has caused me so much stress and anxiety because I don't want to knock it out. Uh, but this baby Volcanion has wreaked havoc on my board position at this point, has dealt damage to a Zorark Break, has dealt damage to my Drampa, uh, and now Energy Drive going to be damaging this uh, this other Zorark Break, setting it up for a KO with this Bench Volcanion. And now that Bench Volcanion is sitting back there uh, on the bench, ready to deal 110 damage at a moment's, at a moment's notice. And uh, I still, Mind Jack is just doing nothing. And also Zorark Break Foul Play, copying Energy Drive is one of the weakest attacks you can copy with foul play, it's absolutely atrocious. So I'm feeling really bad about this. Uh, I've also already used my GX attack, so there's not gonna be any Tapu Cure dreams or anything like that this game. Uh, we're just gonna have to double down and attack with every Pokemon that I have available to me and hope that that is eventually uh, going to be enough to get there. 
Now, I don't have any float stones. They've all been field lowered away, so my pivoting is not exactly great right now. I can pivot to uh, my Bench Zork with 110 damage on it. Uh, I mean, Mind Jack actually does 60 damage, so I'm thinking that, you know, maybe Mind Jack for 60 onto the Tapulele is not that bad. Or I could use Lysander and bring up the Volcanion, who I have just loathed so much. Uh, and maybe knock that out, but that also doesn't really seem worth it because am I gonna really Lysander around a Pokemon GX to knock out a non-GX on Michael's bench? That also seems crazy. So I'm just gonna stay the course and we're just gonna try to uh, to wrangle this game back in because Michael has only benched two Pokemon, but because of the way this match is played, Michael actually takes the first KO, uh, which is insane because uh, Michael has had one of the worst starts I think he could possibly have. So now I have an opportunity to take out the Tapu Lele GX. And this trade is like going to start picking up speed now, right? Because we've kind of jockeyed for position for so long. Uh, me setting up all my Zorks, Michael responding by setting up nothing and turning it into an energy drive war, which is you know, really rough, double fighting Fury Belt as well, making it so that his Pokemon are almost impossible for me to KO. I can now Berserk for Knockout on the Tapu Lele GX, but I'm serving up my Drampa uh, to just get KO'd in return. Uh, looks like I'm considering Lysandering up the Volcanion, taking it out now, uh, which seems fine, but maybe in hindsight, I'm like looking at this, if I actually take out the Volcanion now, I was so worried about the Volcanion because it just does a base 100 damage. By taking out the Volcanion now, now, Michael can just Lysander up my Drampa and take it out. And if he Lysanders and takes up my Drampa, now it's like we're kind of playing this like 3D chess match, right? Where like each of us is trying to respond to what the other is doing. And uh, we're really trying to figure out, you know, how to give ourselves the upper hand here. And each of us has only taken one prize, which is one of, I think, one of the most beautiful things about this format, about the, the slower pace of the game. Uh, back then is that you can really get into these very engaging responsive matches where each player is making uh, decisions and uh, and the game is going to last many turns which gives you so many more opportunities to respond to what your opponent is doing it gives you a lot of opportunities to engage in what your opponent's uh, board state is and try to outplay them and I think that that's what you're seeing both players here trying to uh, trying to outplay, trying to outstep what the opponent is doing, and it's creating a really engaging match here. And uh, even though each of us is kind of having some weird turns, Michael definitely having a, a very odd game here as we see him set up another Tapu Lele with a Max Elixir. Uh, he's kind of figured out that Tapu Lele is probably my worst enemy at this point because I have a bu uh, board just full of Zorks. Zorks don't do anything to Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele hits through resistance, so he's actually going to be dealing quite a bit of damage to my Zorok breaks. But we're kind of at the stalemate. Uh, I do have Float Stone, so now I can finally go up and just Berserk uh, this Tapu Lele, putting myself uh, ahead to three prizes. But I know that Tapu Lele again is just going to come and respond to my Drampa, and then I don't have anything to respond to Michael's Tapu Lele with. So it's very odd. I do I is now the correct time to sacrifice the Drampa? Do I just gust up? I'm considering using Versus Seeker to bring up the benched uh, Tapu Lele, the fully uh, healthy one. And we could just knock it out with Drampa. And I think that that feels right, right? I was trying to save the Drampa for the right moments, taking out a fully healthy Pokemon GX for two prizes that probably feels right, right? So I decide to go with that, and I'm dealing 180 damage with the Drampa, finally able to Berserk for 180 damage. I've been waiting for this moment the entire game, and I have two energy in my hand. Uh, I need to set that energy up somewhere, and I think I decide to go for my own Tapu Lele GX, since I can tell that Michael and I are going to get into this wonky Tapu Lele war here. Uh, in the turns ahead. Now I find two versus seekers off of that. That's amazing because I have a lot of supporters in my discard pile. Pretty much the entire discard pile is at my disposal now. And I've got enough Pokemon to really kind of be able to do some things in this game. Michael finally finds Brooklyn Hills. Gonna go fetch a Volcanion EX and I'm thinking, okay, maybe, you know, we're gonna start to see some Volcanion EX action here at the later stages of the game. Takes the knockout and even though I knocked out the clean Tapu Lele, that seemed correct, right? It felt good. There's still this damaged Tapu Lele that I probably cannot knock out. I mean, it's got 
a lot of HP left. It's got 150 HP remaining because of the Fighting Fury belt. You know, Tapu Lele GX with base 210 HP is uh, quite a hefty dude. So uh, I've got to deal 150 damage to this thing. My Zorak Breaks can only foul play and copy Energy Drive, which is pretty horrible. I can uh, attach Double Colorless to my own Tapu Lele and swing for 100, which also feels bad. I uh, could Kakui swing for 120. That's not it. Now, if I found Choice Band off of the Kakui, I could potentially get there. So that is an opportunity that I I could maybe utilize. I could also take a Knockouts um, maybe with Zorak Break. Um, uh, if I found maybe a Rainbow or a Dark and a Choice Band off of the Kakui. So those are both options available to me. Uh, but... It's all kind of sketchy. I actually have all four choice bands of the discard pile. So the choice band, knockout on this Tapu Lele, it's not happening. It's just it's just not happening, which is really distressing. I mean, because I have this insane board state, but I cannot knock out this Tapu Lele with 150 HP. So I've been dreading this kind of state the entire time. The fact that Michael would just pair his bench to just one card. It was successful. Michael was successful doing that in game one. And now... Uh, he's kind of banking on just really limiting his bench and trying to grit his way through this game too. Despite a very awkward opening for himself, I decided to go for Kakui. Uh, we're just going to pile on some more numbers here. Now, with the, my own Tapu Lele on the bench, I mean, Michael is only two knockouts away from winning the game. I'm two knockouts away from winning the game too, but Michael has to deal less damage to win this game than I do. Uh, this Zorark break on the bench has only got 30 HP left. The Zorark in the active has only got 60 HP left. So take a knockout on the Zorark break. Then it's just Tapu Lele, and that's it. So I'm really nervous about this. Ideally, I would like to force uh, Michael to knock out both Zorark breaks and then force a GX down the line as well and just say, all right, if you take out both of these Zorark breaks, right, then I come in with a GX, NU to 1, and we're going to hope that that is going to be enough to end this game. Now, resources are very scarce. At this point, uh, Michael's Field Blowers have put in a lot of work because Choice Band is what helps me in a situation like this. Choice Band is what helps me fix the math, right? I had a, a route to knock out that Tapu Lele GX last turn. If there was a Choice Band in my deck, there's not. The Field Blower has been ex incredibly effective in Michael's deck. Uh, Michael benches another Pokemon, but uh, my numbers game is still not completely great. So with two Volcanions, Michael knows that he has an opportunity to one-hit KO my Tapu Lele GX. So that's definitely why he's benching the other Volcanion, because he's like, okay, in order to win the game, all I need is double steam up, and we're going to uh, knock out that uh, Tapu Lele. So I'm going for... Uh, my own Wonder Tag, putting down another GX at this point, it doesn't really hurt benching another GX because it's just, uh, uh, it's got the same amount of HP as my other one. So I figure, you know, maybe we're going to kind of dive into some Energy Drive Wars here where maybe I Energy Drive with one and then end up having to Energy Drive with another. Uh, we're just going to put another Tapu Lele down. I might decide to put Drampa down as well, though Drampa is less good in this situation. He takes two attachments in order to attack with. And I only have two cards left in deck. So let's talk about that as well. Uh, I only have eight cards remaining total, and I am fully aware of what all of them are. I have to figure out. It's like uh, I'm kind of you know trying to play uh, some 3D chess here. I have to win the game, and I only have two versus seekers left to do it. So I'm really nervous about this because I know that I only have two versus seekers left to win the game. I've got no more Lysanders left at my disposal other than that. So I, I have one more N as well. So I N us both to low, and I'm hoping that off of this N to low, I can put myself in an advantageous position here. So I only have a few cards. I only have two versus Seekers. I have Shame and EX, which is great, because if I need to kind of sprint through my deck to find the final cards uh, that I need, I'm going to be able to do that. But we see 
Michael has got the third energy for his Volcano EX. He's got a Float Stone and a Sycamore off the end. So I'm just sitting here shaking my head like, oh my goodness. Okay, he's got huge hand advantage now. He's only got seven cards left in deck, but he's got more cards available to him than I do. Now at the very end of the game, now his Volcanians are coming out to play. And I only have one prize left. You can bet that Michael is not going to bench any easy targets. There's not going to be any sort of benching of a star you or anything like that unless it's to win him the game. Now, if he promotes his Volcanion and takes a knockout, I actually do not have, um, I do not have, uh, you know, any, any way to one hit KO the Volcanion. Um, so I think it's, if I find another DC, it's uh, two, four, six, 8, 10, 12, uh, 14, 16, 18. So that's it. I have one more double colorless energy in the deck. I can Kikui and I can take a knockout on the Volcanion like that. Now, Michael, I suspect he's got win in hand, right? Because he passes here. Instead of knocking out the Zork, he knows that I could win the game, right? Because there's my final double colorless. And I have the math figured out. I know, okay. Final double colorless on the Tapu Lele, Professor Kakui, I can knock out a fully loaded Volcanion. But you can't Lysander and Professor Kakui in the same turn. And all my choice bands have been uh, either knocked out or field blowered into the discard pile. So my math is just horrible right here in order to try and close out the game. I can't put this double colorless anywhere trivial. I can't put it onto uh, you know, my other Tapu Lele because I know I need to potentially knock out this thing in one hit. I only have two Versus Seekers left, so I can't just hit into this Volcanion for 60 because I won't have the math correct in order to finish it off. So there's like no point in hitting in to this active for 60. It's a horrible situation. I can mind jack it, that's fine, uh, with my active Zorak break, but I cannot swing in with the Tapu Lele, and I cannot put that double colorless energy onto my Tapu Lele. So I very much think that Michael just has game in his hand. He's probably got Lysander and two fire energies in his hand, and he's just looking to just take the win on my Tapu Lele. So I more or less have to end here, but as I said previously, I only have two versus seekers left to win the game. So this is a really stressful situation to be in because I don't have that actual copy of N in my hand, right? Now, if I had that actual copy of N in my hand, I could preserve one of those two versus seekers and then I would be able to maybe do something like double Lysander, uh, come down the line, but I absolutely have to end. With Michael passing there, with the Vol not even attacking with the Volcanion EX, I know he's got win in hand, so I have to end. Now, the consideration is, do I try to Shaman and set up into my other uh, N? The answer is no, because I cannot put the Shaman EX down. If I put the Shaman EX down, then all Michael needs is just Lysander for game, because Shaman has only got 110 HP, so I can't do that. I'm thinking about Turtonator. Is it worth it to Shell Trap? No, that's horrible. Shell Trap doesn't fix any of my math, and it's a waste of my double colorless. I'm all in on this one Tapu Lele GX. My one Tapu Lele GX versus his one Volcano. That's it. It's just these two big Pokemon GX, and we're trying to jockey for position, and with limited resources, we're trying to figure out how do we win the game with our one GX. And sure enough, I'm going to have to end, but that leaves me with only one versus Seeker left. It feels really bad doing this, but I have to end him to two and hope I put him in a compromising situation. And I think by, I, and I think I'm gonna put the DCE back into the deck. I'm looking, I'm counting, like, should I play the Ultra Ball? Should I play the Stadium? Are there any cards I should play before the end to kind of thin my outs? I'm gonna get rid of the Turtonator and the Team Magma base before I end. So that way I pretty much end myself into only good cards. There's a verse seeker right here, right? Because I'm ending myself to one, which is really stressful, right? So I have to like make sure that I end myself into something good. Now I'm going to end him. He's got 11 cards left in deck and I'm going to mind jack and I put some pressure on, but the math here still does not work out because I know he's just going to retreat this Volcanion. He's got two Volcanions with float stones on it. So hitting into this Volcanion is effectively nothing because I still cannot Lysander up this Volcanion and knock it out. Even if I find the DCE off the top deck, my Tapu Lele is doing 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 100 damage with the Versus Seeker. Lysander, it'll have 170 damage on it. That's 10 damage short. So the math here, there's a reason I've been taking so long for these turns is because the math is all horrible. It's just all garbage. None of it works out. The Tapu Lele GX, even if I top deck Versus, or even if I top deck Double Colorless, I cannot knock out this damaged Volcanion. I could not Kakui this last turn 
because uh, the Kukui would have been nice. It would have set me up, but I knew Michael had win in hand because of the fact that he passed. So I could not Kukui. I had to end. I had to disrupt his hand. And now I'm just sitting here like, I don't even know what my route is. I mean, I really took a long time that last turn. Uh, and I feel kind of guilty about that, but Michael is going to take a long time this turn as well to try and figure out his route because his route is also kind of convoluted. He needs to get a hand advantage. He needs to get to the point where he can just Lysander up one of my Tapu Leles. Certainly he can come up with a Volcanion and take a knockout on the Zorak, but that's kind of a concession because he gives me a way to win the game if I do that. Now, if he comes out and he takes the knockout on my Zorark break with the Fury Belted Volcanion, I think Michael wins the game here because there's absolutely nothing I could do about a Fury Belted Volcanion at this point. And my math checks out almost nowhere. Mind Jack is just doing just not quite enough. And that's why I play four choice bands in this list is because you always want choice band. Choice band fixes all of your math. Now, in this particular game, I didn't know Michael played the two field blower. I felt like uh, that just wasn't something that was regis registering uh, consciously, I also had some hands where I had to maybe like research or something like that and just get the choice bands down. My particular list is playing no field blower, so I wasn't expecting the double field blower uh, from Michael. That was certainly very big. Now, Michael is just going to bench Turtonator GX and is going to Nitro Tank GX. Now, I do not have any darkness energy. I cannot, I can't, I can't uh, use my foul play. It's not an option available to me. My choice bands are also all gone. So Michael decides that going with the Nitro Tank GX is a safe play here. He sees four choice band in the discard pile. He's like, all right, there's going to be absolutely no foul play Bright Flame for game, uh, which is a safe bet. Now he's got a, an insane board state. And sure enough, I have DCE Verse Seeker, but I'm 10 damage short of winning the game on that bench Volcanion. And I'm 10 damage short of winning the game with Zorak Break. It's just absolutely horrible. Because if I Mind Jack, if I Verse Seeker, this is my last Verse Seeker, by the way. So this is my last chance to Gust. I cannot Gust again. And I know that I cannot use this Versus Seeker unless I am winning the game, right? I have both Lysander in the discard pile, three Verse Seeker in the discard pile. This is my last energy. I have no Float Stones, nothing, right? So I have to just mind jack this thing and hope that maybe uh, he does not have a fire energy and a versus seeker in his one card hand. He's only got a one card hand, so I'm hoping that that's not fire versus seeker. If he's got fire versus seeker, he can Lysander up my Tapu Lele GX, steam up and knock it out with Bright Flame. But if I'm doing 100 damage to the Turtonator GX, I do set it up for a KO. So that's pretty good. However, uh, you know, I'm really kind of uh, hoping that he does not have win here. Now, he's got the star you on the bench. So I'm like, okay, bench star you. That means that I can win the game potentially uh, with a Lysander. I'm not sure why he benches the star you. I think he realizes that if I have Lysander, I have it anyway. Uh, and he decides to just go up with the Volcanion. He retreats all the energy off the Turtonator so that if I don't have energy and Versus Seeker in my hand, and I'm just like counting, I'm counting, I'm counting, and I'm like, oh yeah, I got it here with the Tapu Lele GX, and we've got the Lysander in our hand. Uh, but I decide to go the Kakui route because this is the route I was thinking about the entire way coming down, and he's like, please don't do it this way. <laughs> and I take the knockout on the Volcanion. So a really stressful finale there versus Michael Slutsky. Great series and uh, definitely well played. Uh, two Michaels, a really close set. So now we're 4-0 in the Pokestats 2017 North American International Championships Retro Format Tournament. Good games, two Michaels, a pleasure playing against you. And I'm uh, really excited at this point because with one more win, if I go 5-0, I can tie twice and then get guaranteed a spot in top eight. I'm going to be uploading the next match soon, so make sure to stay tuned. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and of course, check out FullGripGames.com for all your trading card game singles, as well as FullGripCodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery. Take it easy and have a great day. Peace.